Greens can be tricky to mix, but it's something that we need to know how to do, especially if you're painting this time of year, where if you step outside, everywhere you look is green, 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 different shades of green. Everything is in full bloom, and we have to know how to mix greens in order to paint. So today I'm going to show you some simple methods to mix greens that will feel alive and vibrant in your painting. First of all, I need to say that I use Daniel Smith paints. There are a lot of good paints out there, but the ones that I'm going to be mentioning today are Daniel Smith's. So if you want to get these specific pigments, know that that's what I am using. I'm just going to show you today what works best for me. And if someone had told me this a long time ago, it would have really helped me out. So that's what I'm here to do for you today. Okay, let's take a look at a plein air painting that I did recently. This time of year, any subject that you paint, if you go outside, if you're painting a landscape, even a street scene, there are trees with green leaves everywhere. You're going to have to figure out how to mix greens, and you're going to want to learn to mix a variety of greens. And let me explain why, and let's take a look at this painting. In order to create a feeling of distance in your scene, you want to cool down the distance. And when I say cool down, I mean mix in a little more cool colors, some blue. You want a cooler color temperature here than you would want here in your main area of interest. You want that background to really feel like it's in the distance. So that's what this is right here, giving me a feeling of distance. Then as you get closer in the scene, you want a little more neutral green, where it's maybe not as saturated as some of this green is, not as vibrant where the main light is in your painting, but a good neutral the transitions from the cool into the more vibrant greens. And then when you get to the main area of your scene or you have some trees that have some vibrant light, some really glowing green color, which you'll see a lot this time of year, you'll need to mix a green that's more saturated, more vibrant. And then you have some little differences from there. Maybe some darker green that's in shadow and you'll need some darks to represent the areas of the green here that are in shadow. Like I said, this is a plein air painting. I might do this a little differently when I was in the studio, but it's great to paint outside because it makes you think through these things and move really quickly. So the, the better you can get at mixing these greens and recognizing which one that you're gonna need where, the quicker and easier painting is gonna become for you. Now let's talk about how I mix each one of these greens. Let me introduce to you the colors that I have on my palette that I mainly use to mix greens. Cobalt Turquoise. This is a standard. I use this kind of as a base for all of my green colors. I like to mix that with raw sienna. I also have some cadmium yellow. And those are the primary colors that I use to mix greens. So first let's take a little bit of Cobalt Turquoise. And let's use some lavender to cool that down. You get a nice cool green that works well for the distance. So again, that is cobalt turquoise with some lavender. It's, it's kind of blue there. Let's put a little more cobalt turquoise in there and maybe a touch of raw sienna. That nice cool feeling of distance. Okay, let's go to a little more neutral kind of olive green color. I'm gonna use some cobalt turquoise and let's get some raw sienna. I'll use this a lot. Just a nice olive green color uh, that I use quite a bit. With just these two pigments, cobalt turquoise and raw sienna. And you can see the difference between the two. Right away you're getting a feel of, feeling of distance there. And say I have some light on some trees and a really vibrant glowing green color that I need. Then I'm gonna introduce some cadmium yellow along with some cobalt turquoise. See, I'm starting to get that really vibrant glowing color. Then I'll dole it down maybe a little with some raw sienna and just play with the three of these until I feel like I have the right mixture. Okay, and then I'll just mix that up here. So you can see the transition between the kind of a cool green, very cool color to more of a neutral to more of a vibrant green here. And let's go a little brighter with this cadmium yellow. Then 
This is good for if the light is really hitting the grass and, and creating this nice glow feeling, this feeling of light on grass. There are so many variations of this that you can play with. Just find the ones that you're most comfortable with. But once you understand this principle of cool, neutral, warm, it'll make a, a big difference for you. If you can learn to mix the three of these, you can use them in your paintings and really learn to direct the viewer's eye and create that sense of believable distance in your greens, which really will help your paintings. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.